three athletes turned criminals that are currently locked up. Keith Appling was born in Detroit, Michigan on February 13, 1992. As a youth, he saw basketball as a way to transform his life. He became an elite high school player, averaging 28 points a game as a senior and becoming a McDonald's All-American. He earned a scholarship to his dream school, Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan. He played basketball at the school from 2010 to 2014, playing with future NBA All-Star Draymond Green and several other elite players. Although he wasn't selected in the NBA draft after college, he did play five NBA games in 2016. Aside from that short NBA stint, Appling played most of his basketball in lesser-known leagues. On three separate occasions in 2016, he was caught with guns. In 2017, he pleaded guilty to carrying a concealed weapon. Before being sentenced to one year in prison, he said this to the judge. I know I made some, 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 some mistakes, but I definitely learned from them, and I'm just ready to get my life back on track. And once all this is resolved, Your Honor, I promise you that you will never see my face in the court of law ever again. Unfortunately, he didn't keep his word. In February 2020, he was caught with 19 grams of heroin that he was planning to sell. He later pleaded guilty to manufacturing and delivering a controlled substance and driving without a license. He was sentenced to 18 months probation. On May 22, 2021, at around 7 p.m., he shot 66-year-old Clyde Edmonds in the man's front yard after a verbal dispute over a gun. He fled the scene with his girlfriend after the shooting, but he was taken into custody two days later. He was charged with first-degree murder, a felon in possession of a firearm, and two counts of felony firearm. After his arrest for the murder of Edmonds, it came to light that Appling was involved in a shooting on May 2, 2021, in Jackson, Michigan. At around 11 p.m., Appling was at a woman's home when her ex-boyfriend showed up. The men exchanged words as the man sat in his vehicle, and Appling stood just outside it. The former Michigan State star fired shots at the man, who returned fire in self-defense. Appling was not hit, while the man in the vehicle had a graze wound to his arm. In February 2023, Appling pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and a firearm charge for the murder of Edmonds. The 31-year-old was sentenced to 18 to 40 years in prison. It is unclear if he will face charges for the shooting in Jackson, Michigan. Mark Rogowski was a famous skateboarder in the 1980s. By age 18, he had won national championships, had endorsement deals, and appeared on magazine covers. At the height of his fame, he earned at least $20,000 monthly from endorsements and royalties on products featuring his name. He came off as personable and charismatic to his fans and the public. Many kids looked up to him and wanted to emulate his success. Unfortunately, it was all an act. Behind the scenes, Rogowski was an unstable man. In 1986, he was detained for assaulting a law enforcement officer in Virginia. He met Brandy McLean and Jessica Bergston a year later at a skate show in Scottsdale, Arizona. He and McLean started a rocky relationship that included an incident in which he locked her in a closet. After four years, they broke up. Rogowski couldn't move on, so he broke into her home to take back gifts he had previously given her. He also threatened her and her new boyfriend. On March 20, 1991, he spoke to 22-year-old Jessica Bergston, and the two made plans to hang out the next day. After spending the day together, they returned to Rogowski's condo to watch a movie. When Bergston's back was turned, Rogowski snuck up behind her and beat her over the head with an auto theft prevention bar. He handcuffed her and then dragged her to his room, where he violated her. He strangled her, then drove her body to the Shell Canyon Desert and buried her in a shallow grave. Her body was discovered three weeks later, but police couldn't identify who she was as her body was severely decomposed. Rogowski had started seeing missing posters of Bergston around the San Diego area as her family had reported her missing and was looking for her. Rogowski confessed to his spiritual advisor that he was behind the death of the woman that they kept seeing on the posters. On April 11th, Rogowski turned himself in after being talked into it by his spiritual advisor. Detectives searched his home and found a ton of blood and physical evidence tying him to the murder. 
Rogowski would tell police he killed Bergston due to his rage at his ex-girlfriend McLean, saying that Bergston was made from the same mold Brandy was made out of. He could have faced the death penalty if he went to trial, but he pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and rape. On March 6, 1992, he was sentenced to 31 years to life. He was first eligible for parole in February 2011, but the board denied it. In December 2019, he was granted parole. The 53-year-old thought he was about to be a free man, but in April 2020, Governor Gavin Newsom reversed the parole board decision. He claimed Rogowski hadn't taken responsibility for his crimes. In June 2022, he was granted parole again. His attorney told the public that a parole board psychologist said his risk of danger to the public was low. Governor Newsom reversed the decision for a second time. Rogowski's next parole hearing is on November 7, 2024. Chance Comanche was born in Los Angeles, California on April 14, 1996. He grew faster than all the other kids his age and decided to use his height on the basketball court. He started his high school basketball career at View Park Prep in Los Angeles before moving on to Beverly Hills High School in Beverly Hills. As a senior, the 6-foot 10-inch center averaged 20 points and 16 rebounds. Division I universities across the country heavily recruited him. He chose to stay close to California and accepted a scholarship to the University of Arizona in 2015. He put up mediocre stats for two years before turning pro in 2017. Unfortunately, an NBA team did not draft him. After college, most of his basketball was played in the G League or overseas. He did play in one NBA game with the Portland Trailblazers on April 9, 2023. In the fall of 2023, the 27-year-old giant was playing for the Stockton Kings G League team. At some point in December, his 19-year-old ex-girlfriend Sakari Harnden told him she was having problems with her friend, 23-year-old Morena Rogers. Rogers and Harnden had some conflict over a Rolex. Rogers allegedly threatened Harnden's life over the watch. Harnden also thought Rogers was telling people that she had snitched on an ex-boyfriend from California who was arrested for two murders. Harnden knew Comanche loved her and would do anything for her, so she lured him into a plot to kill Rogers while she and Rogers were visiting Las Vegas from Seattle. Comanche was in Henderson, Nevada, to play a game on December 5, 2023. After the game, the ex-couple put their plan into action. Since both girls were sex workers, Comanche pretended to be a client interested in a three-way. Harnden had Comanche in the back seat when she picked up Rogers, who sat in the front seat. Prosecutors allege that Harnden drove to an undeveloped area in Clark County, where they strangled Rogers. Then they buried her body under a bunch of rocks. Harnden reported Rogers missing the next day. She told police that she and Comanche had a date with Rogers the morning of December 6th. She also told them Rogers got into an Uber to head to another date and hadn't been seen or heard from since. After getting a warrant for Harnden's phone and locating telegram messages with her and Comanche planning the murder, they zeroed in on the ex-couple. Authorities arrested Harnden a week after the crime. Comanche was arrested by the FBI in Sacramento two days after her. He quickly confessed and told authorities where Rogers' body was. Both Comanche and Harnden are facing murder and kidnapping charges. They are expected to be tried together sometime in 2025.